Welcome back. New and reportedly damning new evidence against the Biden family over allegations of influence peddling, potential bribery and money laundering. House Speaker Mike Johnson is preparing to announce a formal impeachment inquiry vote into President Biden in the coming weeks before the House leaves for the holidays on December 15th. After what he said has been weeks of stonewalling by the Department of Justice, as the House Oversight Committee chairman says his committee will be releasing a new report on their investigation into alleged Biden family influence peddling. This week, the committee released an email sent by a bank money laundering manager who raised concerns over what he called unusual and erratic wires throughout several Hunter Biden controlled bank accounts, including the initial transfer of more than $5 million by a Chinese company in 2017 that was described as a loan despite no documentation of any loan agreement. With 16 separate wires to follow, to and from different Biden-controlled accounts. The bank official went on in this email to warn that recent news indicated China was targeting the children of politicians with sweetheart deals to purchase political influence. And Hunter's spending on drugs and prostitutes was likely putting his family in a financial hole. Adding specifically Hunter Biden's $1.5 billion deal with the Chinese state to establish a private equity firm in which they manage the funds over time and make huge fees but there are no services being rendered. The management company's purpose is to invest in companies that benefit Chinese government. Thus, the activity on the account appears unusual, with no current business purpose. Meanwhile, House Democrats on the Oversight Committee circulated a memo of their own Friday defending President Biden, saying in part, this investigation has uncovered significant evidence showing that Joe Biden was not involved in and did not profit from his family's business deals. Joining me now in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman James Comer. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for being here this morning. Good morning. What can you tell us about this email from a bank investigator? Uh, he's trained uh, for looking for money laundering, and he's flagging all this suspicious activity in Hunter Biden's uh, joint accounts. What, what is most damning here from your standpoint? Well, this is a great snapshot for everyone in America to see what takes place in a bank making a decision to file a suspicious activity report against a prominent person, against a politically exposed person. Remember, banks don't want to file these, Maria, because when you do, it invites the bank examiners in. And that's the last people banks want to see are bank examiners. When you file a suspicious activity report against the son of a vice president of the United States, the bank examiners are going to fly from wherever they are into that bank the next day and look into this. So they wanted to make sure they weren't making any mistakes, but they understood the potential criminality here and the potential vulnerability to our national security. And, you know, when they saw the $5 million wire go to an investment fund with no investments and that they knew that the Bidens had all these shell accounts, and they mentioned that in the email, the, these accounts where they weren't real businesses, they were just they were just like dormant accounts. You get a huge $5 million wire in. So they obviously reach out to the president's son and say, uh, Mr. Biden, what is this $5 million wire? We need to know or we're going to have to notify uh, the Treasury Cabinet of a suspicious activity report. He said, oh, that's a loan. And they're like, a loan from China? OK, well, we need the loan documentation so that we can, we can have that in the records for the bank examiners. And they said there were no loan documents. So the bank knew right away China didn't send someone in the United States, to, especially the, the son of a vice president of the United States, $5 million as a loan without any loan documentation or without any terms of the loan. And what we see here, Maria, is this fits a pattern that we've been talking about on your show for, for months, where the Bidens were taking in, you know, millions of dollars from our enemies around the world, and they were calling them loans, because when you say a loan, you don't have to report that on your taxes. You don't have to notify the IRS. So this was a way the Bidens were trying to sneak money in, and at the end of the day, they weren't paying any taxes on it, but the bank examiner realized that this was a bad deal. Not only is this money laundering, and not only is this tax evasion, but this is how China comes in and, and buys politicians off. They give huge sums of money to vulnerable family members of high-ranking politicians. And they mentioned in the email, Hunter Biden was susceptible because he was on drugs. He was in financial trouble. And they knew this because his ex-wife had said that in an interview. Yeah. And, and they're talking about politically exposed person 
PEP, mm -hmm. uh, which is Hunter Biden. Uh, I, I don't understand why you have had to take so long to actually get a vote to impeach or get this impeachment inquiry going. Do you feel that you have the votes within the House right now to we get a formal impeachment inquiry? I do. And uh, I had a reporter ask, well, what's changed? You know, because the press has been writing, we didn't have the votes forever. And I said, well, I'll tell you one thing that changed. We were in Washington, D.C. for 10 weeks, and there are about 15 or 20 moderates that, that they really worry about what CNN says or what the Washington Post writes. And, and they were getting in their head, Maria. But they, a great thing happened during Thanksgiving. The members went home many of them for the first time and circulated for the first time in over 10 weeks. And they met people in Walmart and people on Main Street. And they're like, what in the world have the Bidens done to receive millions and millions of dollars from our enemies around the world? And did they not pay taxes on it? So they heard from their constituents, yes, we want you to move forward. We want to know the truth. And we expect the Bidens to be held accountable for, for public corruption. So we are unified uh, at a time when I think it's no secret our conference is, is broken in a lot of ways. The members have heard from their constituents back home. Uh, they have confidence in the credibility of our investigation and the mountains of evidence that we've accumulated. So I'm confident we're going to have the votes to move forward with this impeachment inquiry. And, and you've got to have a near majority. The majority is so slim, mm -hmm. even less now with George Santos being expelled this week, right? Yeah, it's tough. I think we can lose one or two members. I mean, Ken Buck, he votes no on everything. He's certainly uh, doing everything he can to try out to be the next uh, anchor for, for MSNBC. But at, at the end of the day, I think our members realize that this is of the utmost importance. And we've done this the right way. It, it's been painful for, for uh, many people in America that have kept up with this because they've seen the evidence for months and months and months that would warrant the impeachment inquiry formal vote. But but now, and I think this this last email and, and hopefully some more stuff that, uh, that may come out next week, uh, people see that there's just too much evidence here just to say, okay, well, uh, that's that, and move on to the next investigation. I mean, we're in the deposition phase, and one of the reasons we have to do this impeachment inquiry vote, Maria, is uh, Hunter Biden's legal team has already sent a letter implying that this wasn't a legitimate investigation because the impeachment inquiry hadn't been voted on. So that was one of the things they were going to try to use in court to keep Hunter Biden from coming to be deposed. And remember, we have to depose him because we have five, six, five or 600 specific questions about specific transactions that we need to know, you know what they did to receive the millions and millions of dollars from our enemies around the world and what level of involvement did Joe Biden have. Right. And, and of course, last week we heard from Hunter Biden's attorney who said, no, 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 he wants to do it in a public forum. Uh, but in a public forum, that's very different than a closed-door forum, right? In the closed-door forum, you can have hours mm -hmm. to, to do follow-ups. Right. In an open forum, you've got five minutes for each lawmaker. Five minutes for each lawmaker. And we've already seen the Democrats don't have the disposition to be able to conduct themselves appropriately. They scream and yell. The last impeachment inquiry hearing we had, they filed two motions to adjourn. They entered the same thing in the record six times. I mean, they did everything they could to disrupt the committee hearing. Uh, we will have a public hearing with Hunter Biden. I'm, I'm very excited about a public hearing with Hunter Biden. And Abby Law can have both his clients in that public hearing. He can have Robert Menendez on one side and Hunter or Biden on the other, and they can talk about how innocent they are in their influence peddling schemes. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we have to depose these people. And, and I know the media says, oh, it's a closed door deposition. We will release the transcripts. So if you look at the January 6th committee and both impeachment investigations of, of President Trump in the, in the last Congress, they deposed everyone. And, and uh, even Jamie Raskins, when he was trying to get Steve Bannon in for a deposition, Bannon offered the same thing Hunter Biden's attorney offered to him. We're not going to do a deposition, but we'll do a public hearing. Jamie Raskins said on CBS this week, I believe it was, or CBS, Meet the Press, one, one of those shows, he said, oh, well, he, can, he might have a public hearing, but he's coming in for a deposition first because depositions are substantive. This is a credible, substantive investigation. We're going to have the deposition. And... Uh, 
that's the difference in asking 35 questions versus asking six or 700 questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. And it's amazing to me that Jamie Raskin pushes back the way he does. Even Dan Goldman uh, seems to be the new Adam Schiff. I mean, he's actually last week trying to raise uh, an issue over the Hunter Biden laptop, trying to suggest it, it, it wasn't actually accurate again. I, I don't understand how your colleagues are not seeing the national threat and the national security issue that this influence peddling potential corruption um, creates. You know, they've tried to mislead the American people with disinformation about everything in this investigation from day one, from the laptop being Russian disinformation to where these bank records have somehow been manipulated by Rudy Giuliani. I mean, it's laughable what the Democrats are doing in their never ending pursuit of being the criminal defense attorney for the Biden family. The American people get it, Maria. Poll after poll shows that two thirds of Americans believe that Joe Biden was involved in his family's criminal activity. That's serious. Public corruption should be a bipartisan issue in Congress. Unfortunately, it's not with the Democrats on the House Oversight Committee. Do you believe that the reason that Joe Biden is so soft on China is because of all of this money that I he's do. accepted? Yeah. I do. I mean, there's no reason in the world why you would allow China to continue to do the things they're doing, uh, the, the patents they're stealing, the, the currency they're manipulating, wow. the, the lack of transparency about COVID-19. The list goes on and on and on. Yeah. And, and he won't even mention it to President Xi when they're in the same room. Unbelievable. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we're going to be watching your work. Thanks very much for being here this morning. I know you'll have more information throughout the week and we'll be there following it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Chairman James Comer this morning. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.